Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over tonight's uh, massive NBA slate um, and a couple of uh, pretty neat announcements. First of all, we're continuing to run our uh, NBA contest for uh, Discord uh, members. We've been doing it the last couple of days, and it's uh, just a $5 entry fee, whatever. Uh, and one of the things we're doing with that is whatever money that gets put in the prize pool for that, we're rolling it over. We're going to pay it out, but I'm putting in my own money, I'm going to be rolling it over into this Christmas slate private contest we're having for premium subscribers, where we have a whole lot of added money in. Can't really say how much yet, but it's going to be a decent amount. So I really encourage everybody, if you haven't already subscribed to TrueDFS to do that, only only premium members are going to have access to that Christmas slate um, uh, add-on money. Um, but uh, if you want to just go in for free, Discord channel, and do the other private contest, you can certainly do that. Um, it's a big slate, and there's a really big contest tonight where it's an 888 paying 250000 for first. Extremely difficult contest. I mean, all the experts are going to be playing it, but I'm going to take a shot. And it's going to be a very challenging slate to break down. So uh, we're going to break down. Uh, we're going to break it down right now. And then also, we're going to be going live again at 6. Um, and a really, I think probably the most fun announcement is that we're going to run back that live sweat at 11 PM Eastern, where I go into the lobbies, including the 250 K for first one, but all the other main NBA uh, slate lobbies and see who's winning, who to sweat, uh, what the, what the character of the lineups are. We'll do a little play by play of the remaining games and have a lot of fun with it. It's literally the most fun thing that I do in DFS right now. So maybe you guys enjoy me with that. You could join. You could join that through this YouTube channel, um, or uh, my Twitch, which is Sheets Pones S H E T S S H E E T S P W N S, um, or maybe some other ways. But definitely through those two methods. Um, please, that's going to be a lot of fun. You really don't want to miss that. I don't think. In any case, uh, let's take a look at the uh, at the slate as of now, at least, and see what's up. So first of all, Milwaukee against Cleveland. One of the things I talk about a lot is trying your best to make a, a, a large slate small. And I think that the lack of options in this game make that a game that you can X out. Um, Giannis is just poorly projected on a slate like this. I have him, when you rank these, by the way, by sheets value score, more on that if you join True DFS, but it's the way I kind of rank my guys. Um, I have him ranked like 16th, and and he usually ends up is like in the top five, and you have to worry about whether you could fit him in. Now I don't even rate it high. Um, the Cleveland defense, I guess, is, just sucks all the projections out of everybody nowadays. So I don't have him pretty much even relevant on the slate. Nor do I have anybody on Cleveland. Um, that's from a spend up perspective. And then when you look at it from a uh, point per dollar perspective, I don't see anybody either. So I think this game is, is a game that you can either manually cross off or if you run optimizers, it'll basically cross it off for you. Um, all right. Next game, Detroit against Philly. All right. With respect to spend ups, uh, I do have Embiid rated the second best overall play on the slate. Um uh, Number one play is just the light years higher, though. But uh, the number one play is going to be a much higher, higher own. Nonetheless, Embiid 11-5 certainly is a good play. But as you'll see, there's also better options, I believe, at that position, or at least comparable from a Sheets value score perspective to that in that position. But like I said, he is going to be somewhat low owned. You do have Harden, who I have rated as the uh, seventh best overall spend up or best overall play on the slate. Um, and he at least doesn't have to fight with all those centers for, you know, roster slots. And he's not, I don't think he's gonna be particularly high owned either. So he's could be like kind of a low, low owned alternative, uh, Detroit. There's no real spend ups that are worth mentioning, but when you look at it in terms of value, there are a couple of guys from both teams I want to talk about. One is Jaden Ivy who, who finally got there for us at 5k yesterday. Um, he had like 40 fantasy points and he can do that. You know, if he has a good game and closes instead of Burks, he can get the minutes. And when he's behaving efficiently, he can score a lot. So problem is I think he's going to be owned today. 
Uh, my early ownership projections don't see it that way. My early ownership projections have been only 11%, but I think that's got to be higher. I mean, people are just going to look at his last game and his price, and and they're going to just – they're going to play him, I think. But nonetheless, he does look to be a good play. The other guy that looks to be a good play pretty much every day is Jalen Duran. Um, let's put let's put these guys in the lineup so we don't forget forget about them. So Jalen Duran, I mean, all the guy does is put up thirty plus every day, and he's not five k. I mean, what are you going to do? You sort of have to play this guy, right? So he's going to be in my player pool, and he's one of the top values, I guess, on the slate. If he's going to keep getting priced like this, so. Um, Jay Nivey and Jalen Duran, both are good values from, from the Detroit side. Um, Philly, really just not much of anything, especially on the value side. Okay, um, moving on, we have Indianapolis or Indiana against Boston. And again, when you look at it from a, uh, you know, spend up perspective or overall, I have Tatum ranked all the way down like 11th. Um, so he's not really going to be someone I probably get to today. And Halliburton from the Indiana, Indiana side, I have him like rated like 24. So I don't think I'm getting to either of these guys, um, in this game. The one thing I would say from a value perspective is that there's one guy who rates. Okay. Yeah. And that would be Al Horford. Um, I'm wondering, though, if it's time to play Robert Williams. When I first looked at it, I thought Robert Williams was going to be a decent player. Just not, not getting that projection from him yet. It's still going to be – looks like Horford at 4,900 looks to be the guy that's projecting better. And I have him rated seventh overall, so um, I, I would consider him a decent value. And when you have these three guys to start off, I think these are three very, very solid, cheaper players. Um I think that Ivy and Duran are more are more solid just because I you just don't know what's going to happen with Horford. I mean, if, if they decide that Robert Williams is going to get all this run and Horford doesn't play as much, then whatever. Um, but then again, no, no minutes for Ivy aren't guaranteed either, nor necessarily the minutes for Duran if you have both, you know, Stewart and 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 Bagley competing. So um, nonetheless, I do think Horford is the best of the given alternatives here, and I think he's reasonable. Aside from that, again, not much from Indiana Boston. All right, so Toronto at New York, and I was at the Knicks game against the Warriors. More on that as we get to the Warriors, but I did have some observations. You know, I, listen, um, Brunson was really good. Randall was really good. And Quentin Grimes was really good. And this is from a basketball perspective. I don't know how they're projecting. I'll, I'll look at him in a second. But, you know, Quentin Grimes is he can play. I mean, he could shoot. He could do some stuff. Um can he play or can he just shoot? Uh, he definitely shoot, though. Nonetheless, um, Randall and Brunson today, I don't really see as that great plays. I mean, I had them rated, like, outside the top 20 as far as Sheets' value score goes, so I don't know if I can get to them. The only thing I might do is if I played them to run it back with a Toronto. And where's my – and the best Toronto guys right alongside of them. I have had, had him rated 20, so – had them rated between Siakam, Randall, and Brunson 2021-22. So I think if you play them, you do want to play them together. Um, uh, because individually they just don't rate to be as strong as some of these other better spend ups. Um as far as value goes in this game, nothing really. Um Miles McBride got some run and uh, you know, he got some second unit run and he got the overtime run. Excuse the overtime, the, the the garbage time run. They had a couple of shots, but I I, I don't think I wouldn't play him. Mitch Rob was just okay yesterday. Too many better center options. I wouldn't play him. So um, I'm probably going to avoid. The only thing I would play if I played the Knicks Toronto is is play all of them. You know, play Brunson and Randall with Siak. Otherwise, they just don't rate to be that great individual plays. Okay, uh, Chicago against Atlanta. Uh, you have Nikola Vucevic, who just continues to be mispriced. Um, he's 7,100, and he just gets between 40 and 50 most of the time. You know, this is – listen, this game three games ago, he didn't play. There was a blowout or something, so that didn't really count. Every every game that's competitive, he gets there at this price. So even 
the problem is the center position and there's other good options, but I think that you can make the case that Vooch is almost a priority at 7,100. Um, so I, I definitely like him a lot. I like his price a lot, I should say. And DeRozan, I think, is a good play as well at 8,500. Um, so I think both of them are, 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 are decent. I have Vooch rated number three overall on the slate. And I have DeRozan just outside the top 10. So I think that's reasonable. And then you have Trey Young, who uh, then you have Trey Young, who rates to be uh, you know, kind of a top 10 play. So if you, you want to play all these guys, you play Trey with, say, DeRozan and I don't want to build a whole lineup and Vooch. And then use these values here. I mean, this is these are some fun lineups you can play here, you know. Um, and that's probably how I'd recommend playing this game. All right, moving on, you have Golden State against Brooklyn. So I'm gonna give you a couple of uh observations from the Brooklyn game. Uh, excuse me, from the Golden State game yesterday, because I was at the game with watching them sweating them against the Knicks or sweating the Knicks against them. Um so Clay Thompson was really bad, uh, and that happens from time to time. And he's out today. Um, Jordan Poole shoots it a lot. He had one assist. He was, I think his line was twenty six and one, but he controls all the usage in this game when he plays. They didn't let him play. They let him play only two minutes of the fourth quarter, then the game was over. So they took him out the rest. I expect him to get full run if this game is close. So he looks good. The other kind of, these are kind of boots on the ground sort of observations is um, Moses Moody was fine. He was kind of invisible. Ty Jerome was okay. You had Anthony Lamb stood in the corner, made some threes. Yeah, you had DiVincenzo who was out. And so he could come back and replace Clay and probably be an okay play, but 6,400 looks pretty expensive. The guy who's really intriguing is is James Wiseman. So he got 22 minutes yesterday. And I don't know if you consider this relevant or not, but he was awful. Okay, so Kaminga and Wiseman both got run. Uh, Kaminga more, you know, he was definitely like a bench type player, but then they left him in during pretty much the whole fourth quarter for garbage time. Um, so I guess he's okay, but 5K is certainly no bargain. Um James Wiseman played 23 minutes, and he was really just not good at all. Um, however, he is 3K. And if he is 3K and you believe that he's going to play 20 minutes again, uh, it's going to be an interesting call. Um, I currently have James Wiseman as the top overall point-per-dollar play on the slate. And to me, I, I don't like that at all. Uh, I I would probably fade that whole thing if he's popular. If he's not popular, I'll trust my projections and I'll just go with it. But if he becomes this kind of like value play to zero where everybody jams in James Wiseman at 3K, I mean, I, I'm just I'm just not interested. You know, um I don't know. It beats it, it listen, it beats me, but but he could play 10 minutes. He played 10 minutes against Philly. Two minutes against Toronto. He did play 22, but did they start him in the second half? Is that what they did? No, that they started him in the game is what they did. But let's you know, let's 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 take a look at it again. Yeah, so this is this is this is the weird thing about this game. They actually started, it looked like they started James Weiss, but they didn't. They brought brought him in, in to, to spell the starters. Then they basically let him run through all of garbage time. You know, they let him come in in the third quarter. They were basically dead. And then they let him complete garbage time. If they, if James Wiseman ends up popular, I think it's a, it's a trivial fade. Uh, that, that, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, of course, if he's 3K and starts and puts up 40, I mean, it's possible, but uh, that's, that's my opinion. However, uh, it would be, I would be remiss to not point out that he does rate to be right now the top point per dollar play on the slate. But I think people are going to overreact to his minutes in his last game, which I just already kind of qualified. All right. 
So uh, where was I? <laughs> so I think Jordan Poole rates to be uh, uh, an actual good play. Um, not, not that James Wise is a bad play, but I just I just think it's fishy. I think Jordan Poole rates to be the best overall play from Golden State. I have him as a top 10 overall value, which is good. On the Brooklyn side of things, uh, you have Durant and, and Kyrie, who both rate to be decent. I have them just outside the top 10, but close enough that you could play kind of a game stack again with, with Poole on one side and either um, uh, Durant or Kyrie on the other side. You see a theme here. In the slate, I think that you want to play these guys with the, with the runbacks. It just becomes it's, – it's, it's easier. It's just life is easier that way. Um, and your performance is probably easier that way. The other thing I'll mention is that regarding the James Wiseman thing again, is that Brooklyn doesn't really play big. You know, I don't know if Golden State's going to really need um, to run out James Wiseman. Uh, in addition to that, Brooklyn doesn't really show a lot of value. So again, same same type of idea as some of these other games. You could play Pool. You could play him with Durant. You could play him with Kyrie. Okay, moving on, Portland, OKC, and this is yet another one of the same theme here. So OKC, I have Shea as the fifth best overall play on the slate, which is really, really good. And then I guess part of the reason for that, though, is that well, Giddy is questionable. I think if Giddy is in... He was actually upgraded from ruling out to questionable to play through his illness. Guinea is in. It definitely is going to negatively impact the Shea projection. We'll have to look at that a little bit later. But as of now, Shea looks like a really strong play. And, and Lillard, again, he's a little weaker. He's like 15th value. But again, to play both of them together, I think is really strong. Um, so I, 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 I'm going to do probably a bunch of lineups like this where I, I play the, these two kind of like mid range or upper range studs in the same lineup and hope that the value is enough to get me there. All right. Uh, Dallas against Minnesota. Um, let's start with the spend ups. Uh, you have Luca. I have him rated fourth overall, which is fine, but from a lineup construction perspective, 12 six becomes very difficult to get to. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. Um, on the Minnesota side from spending up, I mean, Anthony Edwards, he's just not, you know, against Dallas, he's just not going to project all that well. Dallas plays a much slower tempo than a lot of teams and he's going to show up. Maybe he's top 30 and yeah, that's where he is. He's I'm number 30. And then D'Angelo Russell, like 31 or something like that. So not really getting to too much in this, um, uh, I think once again we're looking at the at the center situation, uh, whether Gobert plays or not. If he doesn't play, then 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 you now have to kind of make a decision of what to do at six k with Nas Reed. Um, now again, this is against the, it's the same matchup, right? He played forty minutes against Dallas in their last matchup. So if in fact Gobert is out. I don't think the five five nine is going to make a difference. I think you kind of want to play him. So um, keep an eye out for the Gobert news. If he's out, then I guess you just play Reed. Um, aside from that, I don't have too much in this game, and um, we'll move on. All right, Orlando against Houston. Uh, as you might imagine, there's not a lot of big spend ups from either side here, and I don't really get to not really getting to much of anything. We're really just kind of looking at the value in a game like this, and. Got a couple of pieces here for Houston. Some are just kind of gross. Some are just whatever. Um, Tari Eason at 3,400. Um, he looks to be a decent point per dollar play. You know, 23-minute guy, you know, looks okay. I'm getting a good point per dollar projection out of Eric Gordon, which, which is really gross. Um, but I'll just kind of throw it out there. If you need to get to guys like Tari Eason and Eric Gordon, then then go for it. I think they're okay plays. Then you have uh, Sengun. The problem with Sengun at fifty seven hundred is just the just the position. I mean, we've gone over already five or so like really really strong centers, and I just don't think he's going to make the cut. 
And now we get to two very intriguing games here, which are two hours removed from everybody else. Um, and the first one is Lakers at Sacramento. And you would think that the Lakers or anybody that's playing at Sacramento, you'd want to target and, and you would be, you would be correct. Um, I, I have LeBron as, as the best overall play on the slate by a pretty, by a pretty significant margin. Um, he's going to get owned, but this, this environment is really, really strong. And, and I don't know if I can fade him. Uh, I mean, I could, but he's, he's looks to be as strong of a play as I've seen from him in a while. So there is blowout risk, obviously. I mean, Lakers could get run out of the building, but I don't know. Uh, he looks like the best play on the board to me. Other guys from the Lakers, like Westbrook at 7,400. I think he's probably in play as well. I mean, you're always in play against Sacramento, especially if you're a guard. So I think both those guys look good. Sacramento side, I do like Sabonis more than Fox. Only thing is, again, is that Sabonis has got that center issue. Um, but you can do lineups again. You can play Sabonis and LeBron together. I mean, it certainly makes a lot of sense. Um, but I think LeBron, you don't need the run back. And likewise, I don't think you need the run back with Sabonis. The problem with Sabonis, again, is just the other centers. Um, but I do have Sabonis as ranked number six overall, so maybe he's one of those centers that we're worried about. You know, So if you want to spend up and you don't want to play Embiid, just play Sabonis at 10-3. 10-3, excuse me. So I think this is a really, really strong game. I think you want to play LeBron and uh, you know, get that late-night hammer for the 250K. That's the tournament you play. So Charlotte against the Clippers is going to be probably the death of me because I definitely like something here and it's kind of gross. So first of all, from the Charlotte side, I do like Lamelo. Um, I have him as a top 10 value. Um, it's definitely a pace down spot. They, they just played a, you know, a track meet against Sacramento and now they're playing the Clippers who play much slower. So you gotta, you know, so it's not as if balls like a locker such a smash play, but I do have his top 10. Um, nothing really else on the Charlotte side. The Clipper side is really annoying because uh, I'm not getting to any of this in my projections. I mean, I have Paul George rated like 35th as far as my, as my sheets value score. And I'm getting Kawhi at like 58th. But they're, but they're playing Charlotte, and and Charlotte just doesn't slow down for anybody. And and I I'm looking at Kawhi, and he's now playing 30 minutes plus every game. I mean, you give me 30 minutes plus against against Charlotte. I mean, looks good to me. Uh, so I'm gonna at the very least. In my LeBron lineups, which are doing poorly, otherwise I will use this late game to repivot to Kawhi and something different. Um, it's probably it's probably a bad play. I mean, they project terribly, but I'm I'm going to take a shot. What can I tell you? Uh, and Paul George probably decent as well. Obviously, if either one of them are out, I think the other one's almost a lock. Um, but. That, that's where I am. I don't know what to tell you, except for what I'm doing. Uh, as far as values go, I don't really get much of anything. Uh, I would say, by the way, I, I left off that uh, that Laker game just a little bit too fast. The, the, Thomas Bryant does look like a decent center play. Um, I probably actually, you know, probably similar to Jalen Duran. As a matter of fact, I have Bryant is probably even a better play than Jalen Duran. So, yeah, I mean, Brian, um, LeBron, Sac and Sabonis. Now, I, I might not want to play Brian and Sabonis in the same lineup just because they're fighting for each other's rebounds, but um, I definitely think that's a good play. Okay, so overall, I mean, what's the theme here? The theme is, uh, I think, is is stacking, is to, is to play guys, you know, that are against each other. And – with the exception of games that I think that play is good regardless, such as LeBron. I think LeBron is going to be a good play, even if you don't want to play Sabonis. Um, and then again, just watch the James Wiseman stuff. You know, if he, if he, I'm telling you, if he comes, this is a total ownership thing. Like if he 
comes in with all this steam and he's like 25, 30% owned because of this. I think it's a colossal, colossally, trivially easy fade. But if for whatever reason, like, you know, nobody plays him and no one talks about him and he projects 8%, whatever. So I guess the question people are asking is, where's your break even? Um, what ownership would you play him? Um, I think that if I do a good ownership run and about 15 minutes before post time, it's less than 15, I'll probably do it. Um, but if he's over, if he's less than 10, I will definitely play him. If he's over 20, I definitely will. How about that? So that's uh, that's pretty much that. And let, listen, if he starts, then 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 you then you've had issues if you don't play him. But again, be careful because Brooklyn does not need Brooklyn does not have a lot of bigs. So I don't know if this is the right idea. Uh, listen, I also never I have any idea what Kerr is going to do, but whatever. I don't know. Probably put way too much time into that play. But nonetheless, that's where I am for now. 6 p.m. tonight, we're going we're going live before lock to go over the late injury news and lineup builds. And then at 11, we're going to do the awesome live sweat. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.